Hi, I'm Dale Thomas from OLCT. Today, we're learning how to use the voltmeter setting on your digital multimeter and how it can save you a lot of time and frustration when diagnosing electrical faults. Hopefully, with this tutorial, we'll be able to increase your diagnostic productivity and accuracy. I'm a big believer in the voltmeter as the primary diagnostic tool. However, there are a few things some people don't quite understand. The easiest way to explain this is that the ohm meter requires a prediction, and that prediction is seldom right. And comparatively, it takes a lot of time to set up these tests to disconnect components and individual circuits to quote ohm them out. Voltmeter testing does not require you to do this because you can't disconnect anything. If you disconnect the circuit, a voltmeter test won't work. The most important thing to understand is that there are only three faults that can occur in a single wire. Only three. An open circuit, so there's no current flow in the circuit. There's no electrical connection between the power supply and the earth, so there's zero current flow. A short circuit, that's something wire touching something steel, dropping the resistance of the circuit so low that the current flow goes through the roof and blows the fuse, hopefully. And high resistance. Uh, uh, high resistance is a problem in the circuit causing voltage drop, uh, a load in the circuit causing a reduction in voltage, normally in the form of corrosion in a wire or at a connector. There's three faults, open, short, high resistance. I'll show you how we can determine the fault with one simple voltage reading. An open circuit. An open circuit will be displayed as dose voltage. Notice, with the leads open, the reading on the multimeter fluctuates. Millivolts, volts, millivolts, volts. If we see this during a test, it means quite simply that we have an open circuit. A short circuit will be displayed as zero volts. The multimeter reads zero volts, telling you that something wire is touching something steel. If we see this reading during a test, it means that we have a short to ground. Remember, we're reading voltage here, not ohms. A voltmeter testing means you don't need to unhook circuits and use a jumper wire and waste a heap of time. And you also avoid missing cross circuits. A voltmeter will display misplaced voltage where an ohmmeter test won't. And here's the fun part. If we read system voltage in our circuit here, it means that we can rule out two of a possible three faults. Done. Gone. And high resistance. Now, to rule out high resistance, we need to do a voltage drop test. Today, we're using the Load Pro to perform this test. If you see system voltage, perform the drop test. If the voltage drops, it means that you have resistance in the circuit. If the voltage does not drop, here's the best bit, it means that you don't have a wire fault at all because reading system voltage means that you can rule out opens and shorts. And performing a load test with the Load Pro and still seeing system voltage means that you can rule out high resistance. Only three faults, only one test, you can confirm or deny all of them instantly. This vehicle is set up and the cooling fan should be running. However, the reason the fan is not running is due to resistance in disconnector. To prove that the fan does work, I'll remove the faulty connection from the circuit. This corrosion is not allowing enough current flow for the cooling fan to operate, a concept I'm sure you all understand. But what a lot of people are not aware of is that the voltmeter is too sensitive and is actually going to show you system voltage. So if I open up this connector, This now exposes the entire loop of the circuit all the way back to the battery. Now if I measure the connector, you can see that I'm getting system voltage. System voltage means that I can rule out opens and shorts to ground. Now if I load test the circuit, well, I have corrosion in the circuit, so watch what happens. Sure enough, the voltage drops down to 3.8 volts. 
Well, that's not good. It's a media indication that you have corrosion in the circuit. So we have ruled out opens and shorts. However, by load testing the circuit or by pushing the button on the load pro, we have ruled in corrosion. So now we know we have a corrosive fault and we're not going to waste any time and money replacing parts. So if you think about it, most diagnostic flow charts say, do you have system voltage? Yes, replace part. Well, that's not necessarily true. Step one is both leads in the connector and dependent on that reading, you can rule in or out one of the three possible faults. Now, what we do is we move the black lead to the ground. We're eliminating the ground part of the circuit from the test. So as you can see, I'm reading system voltage. Now let's do a load test again. It drops again down to 3.85 volts. This is an indication that the fault is in the positive wire. Because if the voltage had not dropped, we can determine that because we've removed the ground half of the circuit from our test, that the fault is in the positive wire. So as you can see, with two simple readings, we have found that there is corrosion in the positive side of the circuit. We've made a much better diagnosis as opposed to seeing system voltage and replacing a $211 fan. This test procedure and the load pro makes diagnosing electrical faults a lot more accurate and time efficient. And it's not all that expensive as well, under $80. The information today is courtesy of Dan Sullivan, author of the book Fundamental Electrical Troubleshooting. Both the book and the load pro are available for purchase today off our website, www.olct.co.